the weaker cycles. All right, it's 8 30. Let's go and get started. Hi, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? I have a good first week of school. Bright and early. This is the earliest class I've had in like three years. So, this is, a, this is an adventure for me. All right, so my name is Justin. So, I am the instructor here for EGME 308. So, welcome to the course. Okay. Uh, so, today, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to uh, just give kind of a brief introduction to the course, uh, just kind of talk about what you can kind of expect from the course, um, go over the syllabus. Um, so we're going to do a lot, of, a lot of kind of administrative stuff, and then I want to do your around the, the course website, just to so kind of know uh, where everything is, just because I know every faculty kind of arranges their website differently, um, and I try to post a lot of content on the website, so I want to make sure everyone knows you know, where to find stuff. Okay. Um, any questions I can answer before we uh, begin today? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so that is me. So I'm uh, Professor Justin Tram. Um, you can call me whatever you want. Um, I think most people offer professor, but you know you can call me Justin, um, Dr. Tram. You know whatever. You know what I always tell people is that if it's if it's comfortable for you to call me something, then it's comfortable for me too. Okay. Uh, and I tell people too that uh, um, I grew up in kind of the the era of uh, online gaming, so I played League of Legends a lot when I was in college, and so I'm no stranger to people calling me all sorts of kind of nasty things, and so. I put this out there uh, every semester, and last year actually someone took me up on this. But uh, if you want to call me something like, you know, hey, dick face, you know, I'll I'll respond to that. You know, as long as as long as it's said uh, somewhat jokingly, and, and there's there's uh, there's 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 respect there. Um, you know, anything anything is fine with me. You know? And so you know, whatever is whatever is comfortable. Okay. Um, the second bullet point that's my email. So my email hopefully is pretty easy to remember, and so it's uh, just ran at fortune.edu. Uh, I always joke that, you know, I, I think the school may have uh, plucked uh, a, a, an email address from a running club here at Calpic Court and given it to me uh, just because of the way my name is spelled. And so, you know, uh, that's what it is. Uh, I grew up around here. So uh, my hometown is Cypress, California. So if you don't know where that is, that's about eight to 10 miles west of here um, off the 91. Um, so this is, you know, I'm very much familiar with sports and I see my parents like every other week, which is, which is great. Um, and so, you know, I'm very happy to be here. This is a great job for me. Okay. Uh, my research interests, um, you know, what I'm primarily interested in is using engineering tools, mostly simulation technology uh, for biomedical applications, mostly heart and blood disease. And uh, just naturally just being an educator in, in engineering, I'm interested in ways that we can uh, do a better job of this too. Okay, so let's talk about learning objectives. And so uh, learning objectives is something you'll see a lot from me. Um, so what I do at the beginning of every class, I mean, today's different because it's the first day, is I put um, a list of learning objectives for the day, okay? Um, and so you can kind of almost think of these as like an outline for what we're going to cover for the day, um, but they go a little bit deeper than that. And so if you kind of read the learning objectives, um, you know, you can read the two here. I always start them with a verb of some, of some kind, okay? And the reason I do that is that I want the learning objectives to describe um, some kind of skill or some kind of... Um, action that you can do that you should be able to do after the lecture is done. Right? And so, for example, after the lecture today, uh, what you should be able to do is to describe the utility of mathematical modeling and analysis and engineering. Right? And so what I always encourage my students is that at the beginning of class, uh, I usually come in about 15 minutes early to, to class. I write down the learning objectives. Um, write down the learning objectives at the top of your notes, too. Um, because what that will do is that, you know, it'll kind of give you uh, an outline for the day. Uh, but more importantly, after the lecture is done, you can go back to the learning objectives, go back to, you know, to the first page of your notes and check, you know, see, you know, am I able to describe, you know, the use and utility of mathematical modeling and engineering? Okay? And if you can do that, if you can um, you know, feel like you can confidently do that and demonstrate that, then that's, that's a big part of the lecture and that's, that's good. Okay? 
Uh, but if you feel like you can't do that, then that is a good reason to kind of go back to your notes, maybe go back to the lecture recording, check it out again, um, you know, just to kind of make sure you, you get that. Okay. So there, there are a way to kind of, you know, beyond just the homework um, uh, assignments and beyond the midterms and beyond the final, is to kind of just kind of check yourself to see how well you're, um, how well you're absorbing the material. Okay. So it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just me kind of just lecturing up here, you know, you kind of have a way to kind of see, you know, how much did I obtain from that lecture? Did I understand everything that I need to? Um, so definitely make use of the learning objectives. You know, you'll, you're going to see them every. Okay, and so now we're getting to the fun part. So you know, um, e to me three is interesting because I think it has probably the worst class name out of all of our of our classes here. But so it's called engineering analysis. Okay, and so I remember this. This is actually one of the the first class I taught here. And I remember um, the department chair gave that to me. Said you're going to teach a class called engineering analysis. And I remember thinking, oh, what the fuck does that mean? You know, <laughs> engineering analysis is so vague, but but basically what this is, I, I think a better name for this class is that it's, it's, it's called engineering math. Okay? Uh, and that's what it was called when I was uh, in college. So basically what um, 308 is going to be is that it's going to be a collection of mathematical tools um, that are useful for performing engineering. Okay? And so part of this is going to be a little bit of review. And so probably for the first uh, three or four weeks, we're going to be reviewing differential equations. And so I think you guys learned that in math, it could be, um, you know, and the reason we kind of go over it again is because differential equations and engineering are kind of, you know, they're kind of joined at the hip, you can't really separate them. Um, but then after that, we're going to be learning um, probably mathematical techniques that are probably new to you, uh, but are more useful for engineering. Okay. And the reason we have this class is that, you know, as an engineer, you know, you're going to be doing a lot of math as an engineer. Uh, but what we found is that you know a lot of the techniques that we use, a lot of the concepts that we use, um, you know, they're they're covered by the math department, but they're usually kind of scattered in you know, in lots of different math you know, courses. So, uh, what we thought was going to be more efficient for uh, for our students is to kind of take a lot of these techniques that are useful in different areas of engineering and kind of put them all into one course and then teach it ourselves. And so that's that's essentially what what this is. Okay. Um, and so, you know, you might ask, you know, why is math important for engineering work? And so, you know, most engineering systems, they follow some kind of physical laws. And so they follow the laws of, of physics. Okay? And the and just how the laws of physics are, they're always governed by some kind of equation. Okay? And a lot of times they're governed by differential equations. And so, you know, understanding differential equations, um, not only how to solve them, uh, but also a lot of kind of intuitive and conceptual information behind them will aid you a lot in your engineering work. Um, and you know, I kind of went over the third bullet point. So you know, this is it's, essentially this is a math class. You know, there's there's kind of you know no way to hide it. I don't know why we bother calling it engineering analysis. Um, you know, but it is going to be different. I think another another um, way it's going to be different is that um, you know we're going to focus a lot on the applications. I think if you take a math class here, a lot of it is based on kind of dry you know proofs, kind of you know the abstract math and all that stuff. Um, you know, we're engineers, and so engineers, we, we basically work, we work in the real world. So, you know, what I'm going to try to do throughout this class is to, you know, take the concepts that we're learning and connect them to kind of real life applications so you can actually see where these equations and where these techniques are actually used. Um, so I think that, you know, just, just kind of just, you know, because I'm the same way, you know, I, I like to work with practical stuff. I think it's a lot easier for me to grasp um, new material when I can see the Okay, so let's let's go over some examples. And so what we have here is a uh, is a sports car, okay, uh, or I should say a simulation of a sports car. And what's happening is that we're um, this is a simulation that's done very often in the automotive industry, where they're testing and they're finding out what are kind of the aerodynamic properties of the car, okay. And so what you can see is that they've they've um, basically simulated a case where wind is blowing against the car. I mean the car is driving on the freeway. And what they've simulated are just the patterns of wind that kind of go um, over the car. Okay. And then based on simulations like these, you can compute, you know, what's the aerodynamic drag on the car, um, you know, what's the shear stresses on the car, uh, what's the gas efficiency of the car based on this. Okay. And simulations like this just aren't possible without the governing equations because um, you know, I think probably a lot of you took fluid mechanics last semester, and so air is a fluid. And so in order to solve for um, new behavior like this, you have to solve the Navier-Stokes. Okay. And Navier-Stokes is a differential equation. It's a very big and complicated differential equation, but at its heart, it's, 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 it's nothing more than a differential equation. Okay. 
And so if you if you were interested in doing kind of work like this, where you're basically analyzing kind of the aerodynamics of, of a car, you need to have a strong grasp of um, of math of the different. Okay, so here is a, um, this is actually a game. Um, back then, so I, the last time I taught this class was almost four years ago. This, this game is a lot more new, but now it's, uh, now it's not so new. Um, but basically what this illustrates here is that is uh, structural design. And so, you know, I know a lot of uh, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, you know, you're interested in, in, in going into um, designing structures, building structures, and, you know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of behavior of these structures, especially when we talk about stress analysis, um, deformation, like predicting deformations, um, you have to understand differential equations. You have to understand the math behind it. So you know, something like this is also important. Okay. And electrical circuits too. And so you know we'll be talking about uh, we'll be talking about circuits uh, throughout the course, um, at least from a differential equation standpoint. And so you'll see how the equation that we have um, relate to electric circuits like this. Of course, so, you know, another important part of engineering. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll turn it to you guys. And so it's, it's an 8.30 class. I know everyone's tired. Uh, I'm really tired too. I was, uh, I teach until 8.30 PM on, since last night. So I basically went home and slept right away. So I know everyone's tired, but you know, let's, uh, you know, let's think a bit. So um, I want to hear from you guys about, you know, what kinds of engineering systems are you guys looking forward to, to doing, with, to working on when you graduate? And then we'll talk about, you know, how the math or how the differential equations kind of factors into that. So, you know, uh, feel free to raise your hand. Um, so since you <clears throat> said you're studying like heart disease and stuff like that, have you heard of Edwards Life Sciences? I have. Yeah. yeah so I'm trying to get an internship there. I want to work with like CAD softwares, like SolidWorks and stuff like that, because they like design and like manufacture heart valves for people. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to go into. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, biomedical, I think, is, is a very, it's very much an emerging field. And I think they're. Uh, I've, talk, I've talked with Edwards Life Science before, and I know a bit of kind of what they do, and they do a lot of modeling like this as well. And so that, that's especially true for when you're talking about, um, you know, devices or um, work that kind of in, it gets involved with the human body. Um, and so you know, if we go back to this one right here, you know, this is this is a simulation right here. And so I think what's becoming more and more common in the biomedical field is to use simulation technology because you know it's it's one thing to do it for a car. So let's say you build a car. Um, and it doesn't work out. So you know, like, yeah, you wasted a lot of time, you wasted a lot of money, but it's just a car. Okay. Uh, but when you talk about the human body, um, you know, you don't really have room to mess up. And so if you, if you misdesign a heart valve or something, um, that's someone's life that, that's, that's in danger. And so and I think what's happening a lot more in the biomedical, bio, uh, bioengineering uh, field is they're learning to use this technology more to better design things like heart valves. So, you know, so they don't put people's lives at risk when they try to stuff Good. Good point. Anyone else? Okay. All right. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things like this, like aerospace uh, uses a lot of mathematical modeling as well. So there's there's a lot, and so you know, um, you know, you can even you can even make the argument that almost all of engineering relies on math to a degree. But you know, we'll be going over a lot of it, and uh, you know, um, we'll be going over um, all these things. Okay. And so kind of the point that I was, I was making up to this point is that what mathematics allows you to do is it allows you to um, do what I call model, okay? Um, and so what is a model? And so a model is basically a representation of some kind of physical phenomenon, some kind of real life, uh, okay? And so, you know, here's, here's an example. So we have, here we have kind of a, uh, you know, water that's coming out of a pipe, um, you know, or coming out of a boat or something like that, okay? It's one thing to kind of observe that, but, uh, what you can also do is that, you know, since this is just flowing water, uh, we know that it follows the Navier-Stokes equation. So we know that it follows those equations to um, determine its behavior, okay? Um, and fluids is not the only one. I, I do fluids a lot just because my own background is, is fluid mechanics. Um, but you can come up with the same equations for like solid mechanics, heat transfer, um, thermodynamics, you know, almost, almost every... Uh, almost every branch of engineering, every every subdiscipline has some kind of governing equations. Okay, um, and the nice thing about this is that you know you may look at this equation and you might think of it as you know it's a hassle because we have to solve it for you know an exam or something. Um, but what's but what's nice about equations like this is that it allows you to kind of predict behavior without having to actually try it out in reality. Okay, and that and that um, gives you a lot of options in terms of how you analyze a system and how you design a system or optimize. 
of the system. Okay? Um, so going back to like the heart valve example, right? And so you know, one way that you can design heart valve is that you can just kind of make something in your garage, put it in someone, and then see if they die or not, right? And so um, usually not a good option, usually not a good way to design heart valve because you know if you, uh, if you have a problem with your heart, um, you don't want you want to have the confidence that what they're putting inside you is well tested. And it's going to be safe. Um, but if you had some kind of mathematical model, then um, when you can test it in simulations first, really make all the design tweaks and all of the little um, adjustments that you need to, so that when you do um, go move on to human testing, um, you have a lot more confidence that it's, it's going to be safe. Okay. And in the end, what this does is that it saves you a lot of time uh, because you don't have to make prototypes, you don't have to do the testing, and most importantly, it saves you a lot of money too, okay, which is always going to be an important thing. Okay, and so you know I, I've already kind of done this example, so I kind of a uh, um, kind of a tip my hand a bit, but this is but this is a uh, um, kind of how it uh, how it would work with heart with heart surgery. Okay? Um, and so if you didn't have any math or you didn't have any modeling, you know it would look kind of something like this. And so you know someone has some kind of cardiac event, um, they have to go to the hospital, they go to the operating room, um, but it's something new, and so it's something that the surgeons have never seen before. So they're like, uh, I don't know, try something. And so then they, they try something to fix it and say, if it worked, yes, that's good. And now you're famous because you discovered new surgery. Uh, but if it didn't work, then, you know, it's like, oops, you know, don't, don't do that again. And that person uh, obviously not doing so good. So, you know, this is not a great way to do, uh, you know, to develop new product or develop new techniques. Okay. Uh, but if you were to use some kind of a technology, so this is, this is kind of a bit of, of my own uh, research work that I've done before. Okay. What you can do is you can run simulations on these kinds of uh, models. And so these are uh, CAD models of basically uh, someone vasculature inside their body. You can run simulations on that. Those simulations are built on the map. Okay? And you can have a much better outcome because what you can do is that, you know, someone comes in, um, they have some kind of event, but you simulated this before, you know how to, you know how to uh, deal with this. And so this ends up uh, leading to a successful surgery or successful Okay, um, any questions on, on this so far? Okay, and so what about situations where we can't use math, right? So all that's well and good, you know, if you, if you have a mathematical model, you, you can do simulations, but there are some situations where you can't um, use math, okay? And so one question that I think uh, is, is relevant, especially now because it's been freaking cold outside, so, uh, does being outside in the cold actually increase your likelihood of being sick? Okay. And so if you ask your mom, you ask your grandma, um, every mom, literally every mom and grandma will say yes, um, because you're um, you're not wearing enough layers and you need a jacket, otherwise you're going to get sick and you're going to die. That's what uh, my mom always told me. Okay. Um, and so when you look at things like this, you know, you would you think about, you know, how do I how do I kind of fit this into a mathematical model? So. Some factors that you can consider are things like, you know, the outside temperature, how cold it is outside, um, and how much clothing you're wearing. Okay? And the relationship between these two variables and the fact that you're getting sick or not is, is not clear. Okay? Um, and so, you know, uh, something like this is, is hard to prove. And so, you know, kind of without math, without, uh, you know, uh, a real mathematical model, these things like this are just, they're more just kind of hearsay. Okay. Uh, which or something like this is, is okay, but you know if you're doing engineering design and engineering you know um, simulations or quantity analysis, um, you can't just rely on hearsay. You need to have quantitative proof, quantitative relationships that you can show using kind of the mathematical equations. Okay. All right, and one thing I, I want to kind of shift, maybe shift shift your thinking a bit, is that a lot of times the point of of doing a mathematical model is not just to solve for a variable. So we're not just kind of looking just for one answer, and that's kind of the answer to the question. Um, and so, because where mathematical modeling really shines in, in that, if you if you can create a mathematical model for a for a uh, for a system, you know you can obtain a lot of information about how it behaves, not just one answer. And so you kind of have a, a, a whole model about how it, it really behaves um, as a whole. Okay. Um, and this is really nice when you're working in design work. Because in design work, um, what you'll find is that a lot of times you're making like lots of small little tweaks, you know, here and there. You're not just kind of solving one problem. You're making a tweak here. You're seeing what happens. You're making a tweak there. See what happens. Okay? Um, and that's only possible with kind of a mathematical model. Um, 
And so what this can allow you to do is that this new information uh, can lead to better designs and uh, that you may not have initially thought of. And so it's not only really possible with, um, with mathematical models. Uh, and sometimes there's there's multiple multiple ways to, uh, to go about solving an engineering problem as well. Okay. Um, and that's kind of another thing that I think is learning in this class and maybe different from, from your previous classes too, is that a lot of times there's more than one answer. Okay. And a lot of times you can't find that answer without you know um, you know forming a mathematical model. Um, and uh, you know, um, even solving the uh, the problem in, in the uh, in the right way. Uh, all right, uh, any questions on, on this? Okay. All right, so I wanted to give a brief overview of the course. Um, right now, it may not mean much because it's, uh, you know, we're um, on the very first day. Okay. And so if I, if I use this, uh, um, this, this uh, kind of a, a bubble chart using a tool that I totally didn't pay for, which is why there's a watermark there. Um, these are kind of the five big areas that we're going to cover in this class. Okay? So we're going to start up here. And so we're going to start with differential equations. So uh, for the first, I would say, three to four weeks, we're going to be mostly doing review okay? um, of probably what you learned in 250B. So we're going to do first order differential equations, second order differential equations. Okay? And then what we'll learn from there is we're going to learn Laplace transforms. And so Laplace is uh, probably something that's new, uh, most likely it's going to be new. Um, and that is just a different way to solve differential equations. So this, these two topics here are going to constitute our first midterm. And so our first midterm is you know, very much differential equations. Um, our second midterm is going to be these two topics right here. So it's going to be vector calculus and Fourier analysis. You might have seen a little bit of vector calculus um, in your previous um, math classes, but again, you know, we're going to talk about it from an engineering point of view, um, you know, how we actually use those tools and what they actually mean. And the very last thing we're going to do in the class is we're going to do a little bit of statistics, okay? not too much, uh, maybe for about three weeks, but you know just some important um, stats knowledge um, that's going to be useful for your lab courses if you haven't been using them. Okay, and then here's and here's the the chart broken out a little bit more. So I'm not going to go over everything here just because you know um, we're going to go through everything about uh, in this chart uh, in the class eventually. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you, you know, this is kind of the plan for the class. And so I, I'd like to show this not because, not because, you know, you know, none of this should make sense because, you know, we haven't taken the course yet, but I wanted to show you that, you know, I have a plan for the class. And so we're not just doing random shit every day. We're doing, you know, we're actually doing stuff with. Uh, all right. And so that's just an introduction to the class. So hopefully, hopefully that kind of sheds a bit more light about what this class is about, because I think kind of more so than any other class that we have in our curriculum. This is probably the biggest mystery I've seen for a lot of people. So hopefully that makes things a little bit better. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is go over the, the syllabus. Um, and so I wanna go over kind of the important parts of that. Um, are there any questions about the course overview that I can answer before we jump into, jump into that? Okay, all right, so let's go through the syllabus. And so this is mostly just administrative, uh, administrative stuff. Okay, so let's talk office hours first. And so uh, office hours are going to be Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, my office is actually in this building. So I think most engineering faculty are in the E, the e building. Um, but my office is in, in here because I joined. Um, I'm one of the newer faculty here, um, relatively compared to the other ones. So my office is on the fifth floor of CS. So it's CS five twenty six. Uh, so the way you um, get there is that you take the elevator up to the fifth floor, you walk straight out of the elevator, there's a corridor kind of straight ahead, you turn right, and my office is the first one around the corner. Um, if, you, if you're not sure, just go to the fifth floor and just, just ask for, for me. Everyone on that floor knows me for the reasons in that. Um, all right, so my office hour times, I, I always try to vary my office hour times so that I offer kind of one in the morning and one in the early afternoon and one in the late afternoon. And so this, these are the times that I have for this semester. And so I have Mondays from three to four, uh, Wednesdays from one to two, and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And so I try to vary it so that, you know, because I know everyone's schedule is a bit different. So I try to make it so that at least one time should work for, should hopefully work for, for everyone. But at the same time, I know that you guys are incredibly busy. You guys have so many things going on in your life that uh, I know even this would, uh, I know even these times probably are not, there's going to be a lot of people that these times won't work for. 
Um, and so that's okay. You know, these are not the only times that I'm available. And so if you want to, if you want to meet with me, uh, if you want to talk and you can't make it to office hours, uh, just shoot me an email. Uh, I'm always happy to make uh, appointments for people either over Zoom uh, or in person. And so, you know, just let me know if you need to talk with me, you know, before, um, you need before homework to do or something like that. I'm always happy to make that. Uh, so office hours, you know, what those are mostly used for is uh, if you're confused about uh, the course content. So we, if we had a lecture, uh, maybe a lot of it went over your head, you know, I'm always happy to kind of explain that further. If you have questions on the homework, uh, if you have questions on an upcoming exam, you want me to clear up some stuff before then or help you study, um, you know, all of those are great. Um, or if you just want to stop by and say hi, then that's 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 fine too. Sometimes it's lonely if, if no one comes to this hours. Okay. Uh, okay, and then uh, so the office hours. Um, you know, I, I should I should be here for most of, for most of these days. I should be here in person. Um, the Wednesdays, sometimes I may not be here, but um, but for most for most cases, I, I should be in my office. Uh, I'll let you know if if I if I'm not able to make it on a Wednesday. Uh, but no matter what, you know, I, I do open up a Zoom room for office hours as well. So if you're not able to come to campus, but you still want to talk to me, um, you can join via Zoom and we can chat. Uh, we can chat. Okay. And so later on, when we get, when we take a tour of the course website, I'll show you the links of, on the Zoom links on how to uh, attend office hours without coming to the university. Okay. okay. Um, learning objectives again, and so you know, um, not only do we have kind of uh, daily learning objectives for each kind of unit, um, I also have learning objectives for the entire course. Okay? Uh, so I'm not going to go through these just because, uh, or not going to go through these in, in detail just because you know they're for the entire course. Uh, but just know that you know by the end of the course, you know these are the five things that I want you to be able to do um, based on the knowledge you're going to you're, you're going to learn. From Okay, let's talk deliverables. And so there will be seven homework assignments, uh, two midterm exams, and one final exam. Okay. Um, the seven homework assignments does not include homework zero. So if you want to count homework zero, it's like seven, I guess 7.5 homework assignments. Um, but that's the, but that's the, but that's everything you're gonna turn in for the course. So I don't, I don't do quizzes. Um, I don't take attendance. And so it, your grade is gonna be based just on the homework assignments, the two midterm exams, and the final. All right, so I, uh, I have a policy where um, I drop your lowest homework grade. And so um, if you're not able to, you know, say it's like a really busy week for you and you're not able to do homework assignment, that's okay. Um, I do drop the lowest homework um, grade, okay? Um, so there is that for you, okay? Um, but please do them all. So, you know, I, I designed the homework assignments. Um, you, you probably will disagree with me um, throughout the semester, but I don't, I don't design the homework assignments to waste your time. You know, I really designed the homework assignments to give you practice for, you know, you know, not only the midterm exams and the final exams, but to really give you practice in terms of, you know, really understanding and really kind of nailing down the concepts of the coming course. Okay. Um, and so, you know, uh, people always ask, you know, what's the best way to study for for the exams, or what's the best way to kind of learn the material? You know, it's it's a lot of it is doing the homework. And so, you know, a lot of the, especially for our math course, or a lot of a math courses that you have to kind of understand how to do these kind of problems. Um, the only way to really learn that is to just do the math problems. So, you know, that's what the homeworks are designed to do. The homeworks are designed to give you a chance to kind of practice those um, and get feedback from me in terms of how you're doing those. Okay. Okay. Um, the midterm exams um, are not cumulative. And so uh, I, may have, I may have alluded to it earlier, but uh, the midterm exams are just going to be just based on kind of usually it's about a six, uh, five to six a week period. Um, so our first midterm, like I mentioned, is going to be just all differential equation stuff with some Laplace. Second midterm is going to be Fourier and vector calculus. Uh, but the final will be cumulative. So the final exam that we take at the end, that's going to cover everything. So don't forget stuff. So don't forget stuff after the first midterm because you're going to see it again on the final. Um, and so these are the dates for the for all the exams. So midterm one is going to be on Thursday, March 9th. Midterm two is going to be on Thursday, April 20th. I didn't, I didn't uh, realize that was the, the day, but you know it just kind of worked out. I guess the good thing is in the morning. So after after the second midterm, you can uh, enjoy it if you're into that stuff. Um, and the final exam is planned for Thursday, May 18th, 9 to 10 15. Um, and so this is the important, and this is an important point too. So you know, I know that I'll, I'll be doing a Zoom thing for every lecture. Uh, I plan to continue this for the whole semester. So the lectures will be streamed on Zoom. They'll be recorded, and so you can view them. 
Uh, but for the exams, you have to be here in person to take the exam. So there's no there's no plans to offer the exams virtually. Um, and so if you if you if you're going to have a time conflict with these exams, you know, please just let me know kind of as soon as possible, um, so that we can kind of make uh, make some accommodations for them. Okay. Um, any questions on, on this? Yeah. Uh, for like the test, would we have like a cheat sheet or something? Yes. Yeah. So for for my exams, I let you uh, write a single uh, cheat sheet. So it's an eight and a half by eleven sheet. Uh, you can write on both sides. You can write it or type it. And so usually my my policy for that is is you know um, you can write whatever you want on it. So uh, so I, I I generally suggest that you that you take the content that we have and kind of condense it down into your into your cheat sheet. I know what some people like to do is that they they take my lecture notes and they print it and they kind of they print it kind of really really small on there. Um, you can do that too, but uh, historically those those are not. Uh, those are not that successful because you know you may get every every single bit of content on the cheat sheet, but it's kind of useless if you can't read it on the exam. So um, you know, uh, but we'll talk we'll talk more about that this weekend. Okay, uh, course grade. So this is how the course grades are going to break down. And so homework is going to be worth twenty percent in the course. Uh, each of the midterm exams are also twenty percent, and the final exam is worth forty percent. So kind of a very nice you know 20, 20, 20, 40 split. And then based on your performance, after I input all the grades um, and you get your final kind of course um, you know, number uh, or the, uh, the percentage for the course, then I'm gonna assign letter grades based on this scale. So I think it's a fairly standard scale. Okay. All right, one thing I will mention though, is that um, I, do, uh, I, I, I do scale grades at the end. I haven't had to do this in a while, although I haven't taught this class in a while too. And so what, what, what I do is that if I, after all the grades are in at the end, um, and the final grade, or the final uh, class, the class average for the entire course is below, uh, for this class is 77%. What I'll do is I'll add points to everyone's grade until the course average is at that 77%. Um, I, I think last time I taught this class, I don't think I did that. I think the class average is around like 80, 81%. Um, but, you know, if, if that does happen at the end, then I will, I will scale the grades. All right, uh, textbook. Um, so I have a, I, you know, some people call it a hot take or not, but, you know, I think, I think the college textbook industry is run by the mafia. And so I, I never require a textbook for my courses because they're freaking expensive and they give you no value over the previous version. Um, so it's not required for this course. And so, you know, I'm going to post all my lecture notes for the course. Um, and I, and I lecture straight off my lecture notes. And so I, and I try to be as thorough as I can with my lecture notes. And so. That should be everything that you need for uh, um, for the course in terms of content. So you need to buy the book, um, but if you do plan to get the book, I, I believe the uh, the book I'm using is in the syllabus. Uh, I don't know why it's not here, uh, but it's the Kurzag uh, book. So it's like engineering, mathematics, or something like that. Okay. Um, but for the homework assignments, I make up my own homework assignments, and so you don't you don't need the book for that. Um, and so the, I, I think the only reason uh, you would get the book is that if you if you wanted to kind of see more detail, see more examples um, that are beyond what's in the lecture, uh, or if you want more practice problems, I would say that's that's what the book is for. Okay. Um, and I always tell people, you know, never pay full burden for a textbook; it's a freaking ripoff. And so, you know, if you are going to get the book, try to find a cheap one. Um, math literally has not changed in the last you know forty years, and so you know don't you don't have to pay premium for the latest version. There's nothing good about it. And so if you can find one even from like, you know, 1997, that's probably, that's probably fine. Okay. Uh, and if you have, if you just happen to find one when you're sailing the high seas on the internet and you say, oh, there's a PDF for an engineering math textbook, you know, that's, 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 that's good enough for the students. Okay. So don't pay full price. All right, uh, course website. So we'll be touring the course website after this, but I just want to kind of mention briefly that uh, basically any content that I make for the course, I'm going to put it on the website. So lecture notes, uh, lecture slides, so these slides are on the website as well. Um, all the homework assignments, homework solutions, um, exam solutions, study guides, lecture recordings, basically every anything that I produce for the course, I'm going to put it on the website. And so the website should be kind of your first stop shop for a lot of these, these things. Okay? Uh, announcements are also going to be made on Canvas as well. And so for those of you that are enrolled in the course, probably hopefully you got the email that I sent last Friday. I think a lot of people did. Okay. Um, and so there's that as well. And one thing, one additional thing that I've, I've been doing recently is I've made a Discord for the course. Okay. 
Um, so I started this during the pandemic instruction just because, you know, we didn't have this, you know, we didn't have a physical classroom where we all could meet. Um, and so, you know, I made, I made the Discord as kind of a way for people to kind of interact. So if you had questions, um, you know, and it's like 10.30 p.m. and I'm asleep and you had questions on the homework, um, you know, a lot of times people would ask a question in the Discord server and someone would come in and, and answer the question. Um, you can also use it like you know people have made memes of me in the past they made fun of my handwriting they made fun of the shirts that i wear and so it's all it's all good fun um and so if you it's not required so you don't have to join the discord server but you know if you if you do want to join it, the link for that is on the course the canvas site okay uh, and what i'm going to do after the course or after the lecture today is uh, there's a channel called introduction and so you know you can leave kind of a short introduction yourself. You know, hey, my name is this. You know, uh, I'm a third year, fourth year, you know, whatever, and this is kind of what I'm interested in. Um, if you want, if you want to leave a word like that in the chat, it, it kind of it kind of makes it a bit more a bit more light. So I'll I'll write my own word uh, after the class. Okay. Uh, but that Discord server is really for you guys. And so you know, I basically I, I make the server. I kind of drop my introduction, and I kind of just let you guys to it. And so. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I will say I'm not going to be super active on the Discord because I, I use my Discord account to talk with my friends and, 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 my, and my family. Um, and so, you know, I'm not going to pop in. Uh, I'm not really going to be looking at it, but if, there, if, you, if you do want me to comment on something, if, if someone has a question that no one can answer, um, you can tag me. And so if you tag me in the Discord server, uh, my name on the Discord server is Professor, so it's very, very obvious. Um, then I'll come in and, and answer the question. But usually I'm pretty hands off on the Discord server. So you guys can use it however you have. Okay. All right, uh, course policies. And so uh, homeworks, I, I do accept late homeworks um, just because I know, you know, um, things come up and it's, it's, it's hard to stay on top of all the deadlines. And there, there are quite a bit of homework assignments in this class in particular. Um, so I do accept late homeworks. Um, but each, but my policy is that each day um, after the deadline that you turn it in, um, I dock 10%. So let's say you turn in the homework, you know, three days after the deadline, and the maximum points that you can get is uh, 7%. Okay. Um, and so if, and if for some reason the, the Canvas, uh, you're not able to submit it on Canvas, um, you can always scan an email. Uh, so for the homeworks, you know, for this class, we'll be doing a lot of problem sets. And so if you're, you know, they're all, the homeworks are mostly going to be due on either Tuesday or Thursday. Um, and so you, you're free to kind of uh, turn it in in person and then I can grade it with the right pen. Um, but I think what most people do nowadays is they just scan it and then just upload the PDF onto Canvas, uh, just so that you have a copy of it yourself so that you can kind of hang on to it for a few steps. Okay. Uh, so either, either one of those works. All right, regrades. And so I do, uh, I do do regrades. And so, you know, I'm human just like everyone else. So I make, I make mistakes when I'm grading stuff. And so um, if you want me to take a look at something again, um, you think you deserve more points? I'm always happy to look at it. Okay, uh, but I do place a deadline on this, and so um, you know, for the regrades, uh, from the from the point from the day that I give it back to you, you have a week to kind of look at it and then come back to me and ask for the okay. uh, So this is going to be mostly relevant for the midterm exams, I think. So for the homeworks, usually you know, people don't uh, think too much about the homeworks. Um, and so what I don't want to happen is, you know, I don't want it to be, you know, we get to week 16 and we get the finals week. Uh, and you're like, oh man, I really need, you know, I really need a boost in my grade. So let me, let me try to get something from midterm one. So you know, that's, that's not what I want. And so what I want is that, you know, when I grade your midterms um, and, I'm, and when I grade your homeworks too, you know, I give you feedback. And so I, I, I don't just, you know, mark problems wrong. I write, you know, I write down you know, what you should, what you know, I think you should have been doing. And I want you to read that feedback kind of um, when I give it back to you because, you know, it's not really, it's not really helpful to you for you to read midterm one feedback, you know, 12 weeks later. Okay, so that's not that's not really helpful, and so I want you to be kind of reading that feedback uh, in a timely manner. So that's why I kind of have this policy the way it is that you read the feedback, um, you know, when when it's given to you, so it's relevant. And if I made some mistakes, you can come and talk. All right, emails. And so I'm, I'm usually pretty good with emails. I'm, I'm a little bit behind right now because yesterday I was, I was I was kind of sick, so I, I went home and I kind of just went to sleep. Uh, so I plan on catching up with that today. Uh, but usually, if you email me, I, I, I usually get back to you pretty quickly, either the same day or, or the next day, you know, the latest. Okay. Uh, the only thing I ask is that if you are emailing me about this course, to include um, EGME 308 uh, in the subject line in the square bracket so that uh, I know um, the email you're sending me is for this class. Because uh, I'm teaching two other classes and I have advising work as well. And so, you know, my inbox gets flooded with a lot of stuff. 
Um, and so it just it kind of helps me organize my email so that I can tackle you know, all the 308 emails at the same time uh, rather than kind of jumping around stuff. And so you know, if you are emailing me, I do ask that you kind of uh, include the class that you're in. It just kind of helps me to organize my inbox. Okay. Um, academic dishonesty. So you know, this is this is you know not an easy conversation to have, but um, you know, our our university, our school here, you know, we have a lot of strict policies against academic dishonesty. Okay. Um, and so if you're you know copying homework, copying from cheating during an exam, you know, having your phone out or something, you know, there's very strict policies. You know, at the very least, what's going to happen is that you know if, if you are if you do cheat on one of these uh, on like a homework or a midterm or something. At the very least, you know, we have to give you a zero on that assignment. And for a lot of times, you know, especially if it happens on like a midterm exam or final exam, it just results in automatic F. And so, you know, it's there's not that much leeway in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of how this is interpreted. It's, that's just kind of how it is. Um, and, you know, the reason, the reason we kind of take such a hard line stance on this is that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you're, you know, if you're not kind of doing the work yourself, if you're, you, know, you have to, you have to copy or something like that. Uh, you're not learning, and you know you're taking this course. You know, um, at the end of the day, to really learn um, the content from this course. Okay. Um, and you know, my goal, or at least you know what I what I view my role here as, as your instructor, is to really make sure that you all leave this course and you feel confident and you feel like you've really mastered this. Okay. And so, you know, the thing that I the thing I really ask you is that if you if you ever feel like you're struggling in the course, if you ever feel like you're falling behind or that you're not you know, keeping up with the homework, you think you're gonna bomb the midterm or something like that, the only thing I ask is that you come talk to me first. And I I I promise you, you know, my I'm not gonna you know judge you, I'm not gonna criticize you. That's that's not my job. My job here is to kind of help you and support you and, and help you succeed in kind of the best way possible. Okay. Um, because if you if you talk to me first, you know, there's there's a lot of things that we can do. In terms of you know getting you up to speed with the course, and so you know, we can um, have kind of extra office hour sessions for you, just to kind of you know, help tutor you, kind of catch you up. Um, you know, maybe we move some deadlines around to kind of make things a bit better for your schedule. You know, there's there's a lot of things you can do, but if you get to the point where you where you're copying you know people's home your other people's homeworks or you're cheating during the exam, you know at that point there's really nothing I can do because that's you know we have policies for this in the school, and you know. Um, and you know, there's at that point, there's nothing. So, you know, the only thing I, you know, so please just, you know, if you're struggling, um, just come talk to me. You know, I know, you know, for a lot of you, this is the first time that we're meeting. So, it's like you're going on a first date, and someone says, "I love you." You know, please stay with me forever. Um, so, I know it's it's kind of an intense thing to talk about, but you know, I, I promise you, you know, I'm here to support you. I'm here to you know help you succeed, and I want everyone to succeed. Okay? So, just come talk to me, and I, and I promise you, I'll do everything that I can. All right, and so uh, we've reached the end of the slides. And so, you know, after this, we'll, we'll be touring the website. Um, and after that, we'll, we'll wrap it up for today. Uh, but I did want to mention the first homework assignment, or homework zero, I guess you could say. Uh, so homework zero is, uh, I call it email introduction. So this is something I do for all my courses every semester. Okay? Uh, I think for this for this course, you know, I think most, most of you are meeting for the first time. So this, this will be really fun. Okay? Um, and so I do this because, you know, we're, we're going to be, you know, whether you like it or not, we're going to be stuck together for the next 16 weeks. And so usually it's kind of a lot more pleasant if I, if I know, if I kind of know who you are and kind of, uh, um, you know, I, I kind of get to know you because, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit nicer. Now. Um, and so the only thing you have to do is just send me an email, just introduce yourself. You can write as much or as little as you want. Um, you can even just send me an email to say, you know, hey, Dick Face, give me credit for this, and I will give you credit for it because that's that's the assignment. But you know, generally, it's 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 a bit nicer if you write it. Uh, and so, you know, you can write whatever you want, but you know, if you if you're having trouble kind of um, thinking about what to what to write, I have some four questions here that you can answer. You can you can answer all of them, or you can answer none of them, or, or two or three of them. It's up to you. Okay. Um, but some question that you can consider um, to answer in your introduction email is that you, know, you can say, you know, what kind of career would you want to have? Um, what would you most like to learn in this course? You know, what are you hoping to get out of this course? Do you have any worries or concerns of the course? And you know, just what are your interests in, in office? Okay. Um, and you know, questions two and three are, 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 are important to me because you know, if there are certain things that you're hoping to get out of this course or you have certain worries, and that helps me kind of steer the course in certain directions to kind of make sure that it kind of works for as many people as possible. Okay. 
All right, so the due date for this is going to be this Sunday. And so if you can send me an email before this Sunday, then you're going to get full credit. Okay. And just make sure that when you do send me these emails, I know some of you have sent me this already, so you know, don't, don't send another one. Um, but if you haven't sent it yet, you know, please include uh, EGME 308 in the subject line, um, you know, just so that I know uh, what class it is. All right, uh, any questions on, on this so far? Okay, all right, so last thing I want to do today, we'll probably end uh, quite a bit early today, is I wanted to tour the course website. <clears throat> okay, so here is the course website, and so I switched it to student view. I don't think you got this ugly purple, but it does that. Okay. But I want to switch this because this is kind of what you guys are seeing. All right, so the first thing you do, first thing you see when you come to the course website is you see the title of the course so that you know that you're in the right place. Um, that's me, that's my email address. If you click on this, that's like my Tinder profile of teaching. You can read that if you want. Uh, I've been changing that for like three years and so I don't even know what's in there anymore. Okay. Class times are Tuesday, Thursday, 8.30 to 9.45. Um, you all know that because you're here. Class location is CS304. Everyone that's here knows that because you're here, which is good. Okay. Uh, here's a description of the course. Um, you know, it kind of just summarized kind of what we talked about in the first part of the course uh, today. Uh, here we have the learning objectives. Here's the syllabus. And so um, this is the kind of the paper version of the syllabus. So it has basically everything that we talked about just now, but in paper format. So you can definitely kind of read up on that. Uh, next section here, um, these are all the Zoom links. And so remember, uh, if you want to attend the lectures virtually, um, you can do so from the Zoom links. Um, and then those are all the links for the office hours as well. So if you wanted to uh, attend the office hours virtually, um, just go to the Canvas site, go to the homepage, and then click on the Zoom links here. So, you know, next one is going to be Wednesday, so that's tomorrow. Um, so if you wanted to come to office hours tomorrow at one o'clock, um, but you want to do it virtually, just click on this link right here. It'll open up Zoom and you can come. Um, um, Discord, uh, Discord link. And so if you're interested in joining the Discord server, you can do so here. All right, and then we come to the bottom of the homepage. And so this is where, you know, you're probably gonna spend most of your time on the course website, because this is where this is where I basically post everything. Okay. And so what you can see from here is I have kind of a week by week breakdown of kind of everything that we're gonna learn uh, in this course, okay? Uh, so most of it most of it is, is uh, unclickable right now because, you know, uh, we haven't reached those points. Um, but as we go through the semester, each of these links will become clear, okay? Is the only one that's clickable, clickable right now is week one. So let's go ahead and look at week one. All right, and so what you'll see here is that uh, you know I wrote a little bit of a blurb in terms of you know what you can expect to learn this week, so you can kind of read that. Um, there's the learning objectives for the week, uh, so those are all the things that you know we're, we're going to learn um, this week. That's, that's the outline. Okay. Um, the lecture recordings will be posted here as well, and so if you're looking for a specific lecture recording, you know I post them on this kind of course outline here. Okay, and so let's say that you missed the the Thursday lecture of week two or something. Then what you would do is that you would click on the link here and go into the page, and then you can see the, the link for lecture two. So um, usually, you know, because this is a morning class, usually I'll have the lectures posted by the afternoon of that day. So today's lecture recording will be posted, you know, probably by, you know, three or four o'clock once I have some kind of free time today. Okay. Uh, and then you can view it here. So they're posted on YouTube. So, you know, YouTube, they haven't um, taken them down yet. And so, you know, all my previous, uh, uh, all right, the other thing you'll see here is any active assignments, and so any assignments that are out there. Uh, so you have homework zero is the only one right now, and so that is the, that's the one that you can click. And any files for the week I'll be posting here as well. So any of the lecture notes, any of the lecture slides, um, homework solutions, if I grade homework for the week will be here as well. Um, and so it all should be, should be here, okay? And so for this week, the only files that are relevant are the syllabus, which you can uh, you can take a look at if you want to find more information. There is the slides, and so that's just the slides that I just presented here. Um, and then the lecture notes on first order ODEs. This is what we're going to go over on Thursday. Okay. All right, and so you know I, I usually make the weekly pages for the following week on Fridays. And so if you wanted to read up and kind of download the lecture notes for the upcoming week. Um, you can do that on Friday. So I usually have these up usually by, by Friday afternoon. Okay. And so by from this Friday afternoon, the, the, page, the page for week two should be up with all the relevant, um, you know, all the relevant files, all the relevant you know, links for everything. Um, 
so you can take a look at that. Um, any questions on, on this? All right, so the weekly viewer or the course outline, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, that's going to be your uh, that's going to be your, your, your one stop shop. So definitely kind of stay updated on these ones um, and dabble the lecture notes just so that you can kind of use them. So. All right, second tab here is announcements. And so, you know, um, I only have one announcement so far. This is just the welcome email that I sent out. All right, next tab is the assignments. And so all the homework assignments will be here. Um, you know, um, the midterm grade will be here as well, but I think probably the more convenient place to view the midterm grade are going to be in the grades tab. And so if you click on the grades tab, you know, probably you guys have seen Canvas before. This is, these are all the graded assignments. Uh, so most of the time, uh, I try to grade everything a week after it's due. And so, you know, for the homeworks, it takes me, you know, depends on how busy I am with, with advising stuff. It takes me about a week to, to grade those. Uh, same thing for the midterm exam. So after the midterm exam, it, uh, We'll have them graded about a week later. Okay. All right, people. So here's the list of everyone in the course. And the last uh, link here is the files. So uh, under files, you'll see this is kind of like the uh, almost like the Dropbox for the course. So all the lecture notes, um, all the homework assignments, the solutions, everything should be posted here. So if you click on uh, assignments, it's empty right now because there's no assignments. Solutions, there's nothing. Um, but I have uploaded all the lectures. So these are all the lecture notes that uh, I plan to go over for the course. Um, and so if you're interested, you can you can read ahead right now if you really want. We'll, we'll go we'll go through this. Well. And so all of these files will be posted on the course outline. And it might be it might be better in that case because they're sorted per week. Uh, but if you're looking for just a specific file, then you can check the file stack. But Everything that's in the files tab will be posted on the course outline eventually when they're when they're up. Um, okay. Um, any final questions on the website or just any final questions for today? Oh, I know some people are still on the wait list. And so um, you know, so so usually my policy with the wait list, so this room is very big, so it's, it's nice. And so you know, we can we can accommodate a lot of students here. Um, so basically, I'm going to, I, I'm not sure what the capacity is, I need to see out there, but basically, everyone that's on the wait list, I'm going to accept into the course up until the physical capacity of the classroom is set. So um, I haven't checked the wait list recently, but I think a couple of people just joined um, then, and so I'll, I'll take a look and see what that is about. Um, but I'm going to try to um, let in as many people as I can. So I plan to talk to uh, the department chair about that, but that's not going to happen until Friday. And so usually, usually during the week, uh, people kind of drop out the course. They say, "Oh, you know, professor shirts ugly, or you know, looks weird. You know, so they don't want to take a course with me." And so, usually by Friday, the, the course enrollment usually stabilizes. So at that point, I said, "Okay, you know, there's five people on the wait list. Let me add those five people." So if you're on the wait list for now, just kind of hang tight, and then I'll see what it's like on Friday, and then you'll have an answer by then if you're if you're in the course. But the only thing we're basically not going to advise is just the capacity of the room. Um, but there's a ton of seats in here. <coughs> All right, and so let's uh, uh, let's call it here for today. Uh, I usually don't like to cover stuff on the first day, and so you guys are free to go. Uh, I'll stick around. I'll stick around here if you have any questions. Uh, but if not, hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I will see you on Thursday. Here for thirty minutes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, some of you are making. Okay. Good to see you first. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is pretty deep. Yeah. Okay. Let's watch the recording after. Yeah, so we're just going to do the lecture. So there's no. Just make sure you watch the recording. Hey, what's up? Oh, I'm sick. I don't want to see it. Otherwise, I would. Um, are you doing any office hours today? Uh, I don't have any for Tuesday. Um, 
Um, but uh, I do have a bit of time right now. If you want to speak. For the next I'm going to schedule it. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Let's sit here for the next class. Okay. I see. So I'm just wondering if we could wait and schedule and see if it's. Generally, yes, because thermodynamics is a prerequisite for fluid mechanics 333. And so that is that is usually a bit more important. So that's a bit further back on the there's there's a few like patterns. Real waste kind of within this. So the only thing that's really leads into is um uh, vibration. And so I would say thermo is more important because uh, fluid mechanics is only often the fault. So I make sure you finish thermo before. Because uh, if you don't, then you kind of have to wait a year for that. Yeah, yeah, I would wait. I would wait on if you can't get in the thermal, this is just as fine as it can well. But I would put priority on them. Yeah. <laughs> 